There is no time in heaven. And before the creation, there was no time. So once upon a time, there was a time when there was no time. Think about that one. Anyway. <laughs> so when the textbook says nothing really means nothing, that's stupid, okay? Uh, it's just not common sense. None of these things can create themselves. Time, space, and matter cannot create themselves. They have to have an outside force, like an all-wise, all-powerful, almighty, infinite God to create those things. Then the textbook says this little tiny dot was spinning. It spun faster and faster, yes, boys and girls, and one day it exploded. <laughs> Big bang. Well, if you take a merry-go-round, put some kids on there, get the merry-go-round going clockwise as fast as it'll go, the kids go through distinct phases. In phase one, they're screaming at the football players, come on, let's go faster, faster. You get up around, you know, 30 miles an hour. <laughs> they go to phase two, where they stop screaming. Then you get going faster and you get around 60 miles an hour, they start screaming again. But now they're screaming, stop, stop, please slow down. When you get up around 100 miles an hour, you enter phase four, where the kids begin to fly off the merry-go-round. <laughs> Now, when the kid flies off, you notice something interesting. As the kid is flying off the merry-go-round, if the merry-go-round is going clockwise, the kid, even after he leaves, is spinning clockwise until he encounters resistance, like a tree or telephone pole. <laughs> That's because of a law known as the conservation of angular momentum. A spinning object that breaks apart will send all the fragments off spinning in the same direction. And people say, well, what if they collide? They can't collide. The, farther, the longer you wait, the further apart they get. It's like spokes on a wheel. They're getting farther apart. If a hand grenade explodes, can the fragments ever hit each other out in the field someplace? No, <laughs> it doesn't happen, okay? Conservation of angular momentum says spinning objects break apart and the fragments fly the same direction, spin the same direction. So when they tell you that it all came from a spinning dot, it's silly, it violates common sense laws. Two planets, Venus and Uranus, are spinning backwards. Eight of the 91 known moons are spinning backwards. Three planets have moons going both directions at the same time. Some whole galaxies are spinning backwards. CNN, Goofy Galaxy spins wrong direction. <laughs> the Big Bang Theory is stupid, okay? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So when they tell you it spun faster and faster and one day it exploded, that's simply stupid, okay? That's not the way it happened. So we have cosmic evolution, which I think is silly. Then we have, um, the, the textbook says, as the earth formed, the surface was hot and there were large pools of bubbling lava. Was the earth ever a hot molten mass like the textbook says? The Bible says the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. The Bible says God created it cold, not hot. See, everything about the evolution theory is backwards to the Bible. Don't try to compromise those two, okay? It's like trying to ride two horses going but different directions, same time, okay? Uh, Robert Gentry's got a great book on the uh, radio, uh, radio polonium halos. Uh, Gentry's a brilliant man. I think he's spoken at the conference, hasn't he? Uh, I've spoken with him at a couple conferences. I don't know if it was stealing the mind or not, but... Uh, Brilliant man, lives in near Knoxville, Tennessee. He's done lots of study on the granites around the world. The granites all contain these radio polonium halos, which have an extremely short half-life, proving they were never a hot molten mass. But these radio polonium halos tell us absolutely positively the Earth was never a hot molten mass. And if you melt granite and let it cool back down, it doesn't form into granite again. Nobody knows for sure how granite was made. So when the textbook says the earth was a hot molten mass, I'm sorry, that's stupid. It's not true. It's lacking normal intelligence. It didn't happen that way. Secondly, we'd have to have what's, or thirdly, with chem, secondly, yeah, uh, chemical evolution. All the elements forming from hydrogen, they think it all came from a big bang. Atoms of hydrogen in the proto-sun were fused together to form helium. Okay, I'll agree that can happen. But it's stupid to think that's going to form all the elements. They say, well, yeah, you can fuse and get, you know, hydrogen fuses to helium. I agree. And you can't fuse past iron, though. It won't go past iron. How do you get, you, you tell me you got uranium from hydrogen? I'd like to see that, please. It's not, it's lacking normal intelligence. It just doesn't happen. Chemically, it's not possible. Thirdly, there'd have to be what's called stellar evolution. The stars would have to evolve. The Bible says, God made the stars. Plain and simple, that's just what it says. Textbook says, 18 to 20 billion years ago was the Big Bang, which caused the formation of galaxies. Well, we got a real serious problem here. Big Bang Theory says nothing got together and exploded while it was spinning and formed all these galaxies. Well, problems are multitude for this theory, okay? Some think the Big Bang Theory made nice, neat, orderly galaxies. That's stupid, okay? These galaxies are really incredibly designed. Even at the galaxy level, there's design in the universe, all the way down to the molecular level. We see a star blow up about every 30 years. A star explodes. It's called a nova or a supernova. If, supernova, if the universe is billions of years old, why are there less than 300 supernova rings ever discovered? 
That's only a few thousand years worth. I mean, if a star is blowing up every 30 years, there ought to be millions of these supernova rings if the universe were millions of years old. Don't tell me it's millions of years old. I don't believe you. That's just not common sense. They say, well, yeah, new stars are forming. They say, this textbook says, new stars are constantly being born in clouds of gas and dust. First of all, that's not ever observed, okay? The silent embarrassment of modern astrophysics is we do not know how even a single one of these stars managed to form. You can't get dust and squeeze it together and make a star. There are common sense laws that overcome that, like Boyle's gas law. You try to squeeze the gas together, the pressure builds up and it drives it back apart. Nobody ever sees gases form into solids by their own internal gravitational force. So if, star, if stars evolve, star births should at least equal star deaths. And we're seeing one die every 30 years, and we're never seeing one form. One guy said, oh, we're seeing a star form right now in Crab Nebula. I said, no, you're not. He said, yeah, we are. I said, no, you're seeing a spot getting brighter. You see a spot, and it's getting brighter, and you're assuming a star is forming. Well, duh, it could be a dust cloud is clearing in front of it. It could be another big bang going off, I mean, a, a supernova going off out there. All you're seeing is a st spot getting brighter. You're assuming it's making a new star. Nobody's ever seen a new star form. Some people think if we lose stars every 30 years and never replace them, this will eventually lead to having 70 sextillion stars. Yeah, you keep spending money, pretty soon you'll be rich. That's stupid, okay? It just is stupid, okay? Uh, some of these planets are cooling off. They're constantly losing their heat, okay? And the textbooks is telling us they're millions of years old, billions of years old. You can't just keep cooling off and cooling off. Pretty soon it's cooled off. <laughs> I mean, if you walked into a room and found a cup of coffee sitting on the table and I said, don't touch the coffee, that's hot. And you said, well, whose is it? I said, I don't know. It's been sitting there for 400 years. <laughs> that's stupid, okay? Jupiter has a moon called Ganymede, which has a very strong magnetic field. Scientists are kind of perplexed by this because the magnetic field indicates a hot molten core, and yet Ganymede should have cooled off billions of years ago. Why does Ganymede still have a hot molten core and a strong magnetic field? To say it's billions of years old is stupid. It's just lacking common intelligence. Saturn has rings around it, but the rings are constantly expanding. They're moving away from the planet. To say they're billions of years old is stupid. They can't be billions of years old. They would have been dissipated by now. They're not billions of years old. The moon is going farther away from the earth every year. We're slowly losing the moon. Now this is gonna be complicated, so listen carefully. As the moon goes around the earth, it's gradually getting farther away. It's spiraling out about three inches a year. So that means that it used to be closer. <laughs> well, if you bring the moon in closer, you start to create a problem, you see, because the moon causes the tides. Now, you folks here in Denver probably don't worry about the tides. <laughs> but in Pensacola, you worry about the tides, okay? Well, if you brought the moon in closer, you'd create a serious problem because there's a law called the inverse square law. If you bring the moon into one-third the distance, you take the one-third, inverse it, square it, it's nine times the gravitational pull. If you run all the math on this, you'll find 1.2 billion years ago, the moon was whizzing around just above the surface of the Earth. <laughs> that explains what happened to the tall dinosaur. They got moon. So to teach us the, earth, the moon is billions of years old while it's constantly moving away and nobody knows of any factors that would reverse that situation, that, that's just stupid, okay? It can't be true. Organic evolution is the fourth stage. That's where life gets started from non-living material. The Bible says God created the living creatures. And there are folks who simply don't want God telling them what to do, bottom line. God, leave me alone, stay out of my life. Okay. So they got to figure out a way how life got here without involving a supernatural intelligence creating it. The Bible says God created it. This textbook says the history of life on earth began approximately three and a half billion years ago. How this occurred and has been and